uh, saying, how should those of good family learn who wish to follow the profound practice of the wisdom gone beyond? Thus he spoke in the noble of Alakitashvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva replied to the Venerable Shariputra, saying, O Shariputra, whatever son or daughter of good family wishes to follow the profound practice of the wisdom gone beyond, should look at it like this, analyzing the five aggregates by nature empty. Form is empty, emptiness is form. Emptiness is no other than form. Form is no other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, recognition, karmic formations, and consciousness are all empty. Therefore, Shariputra, all phenomena are empty without characteristics. They are unborn and unceasing. They are neither impure nor free from impurity. They neither decrease nor increase. Therefore, Shariputra, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no recognition, no karmic formations, no consciousness. There is no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind. There are no spheres of the eyes up to no spheres of the mind. There are none of these all the way up to the sphere of mental consciousness. There is no ignorance, nor is there destruction of ignorance. There are none of these all the way up to, there is no old age and death, nor is there destruction of old age and death. Thus, there is no suffering, no cause of suffering, no cessation of suffering, and no path. There is no wisdom, no attainment, no non-attainment. Therefore, Shariputra, because there is no attainment, all bodhisattvas hold of the wisdom gone beyond. And because there is no obscurity of mind, they have no fear. Passing utterly beyond falsity, they reach beyond the bounds of sorrow. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times by relying on the wisdom gone beyond, fully and clearly awaken to unsurpassed, most perfect and complete enlightenment. Therefore, the mantra of the wisdom gone beyond, the mantra of great insight, the unequaled and unsurpassed mantra, the mantra that calms all suffering should be known as the truth, for there is no deception. The mantra of the wisdom gone beyond is proclaimed. Oh, Shariputra, this is how a Bodhisattva Mahasattva should learn the profound wisdom gone beyond. Then the Blessed One arose from that concentration and praised the noble Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, saying, Very good, very good, O oh son of good family. It is exactly like that. The profound wisdom gone beyond should be practiced exactly as you have said, and then the Tathagatas will rejoice. Because when I said this, the Venerable Shariputra, the Noble Avalokiteshvara, the whole gathering in the world with its gods, men, anti-gods, and spirits, their hearts full of joy, praise the words of the Blessed One. So wins the Noble Discourse on the essence of the wisdom gone beyond. Anything here? I I Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. I I I now we will begin class. It is Thursday, and this is the Thursday lesson in the way of the Bodhisattva, concerned with the chari of the Bodhisattvas the conduct of the bodhisattvas and our developing an ability to practice in their mode. And the behavior of the bodhisattva is learned, developed through listening, contemplation, and meditation. And this is our time for those. Mm, that is the Hindu Yes, Junjuk. Junjuk, <laughs> 
So then the way of the Bodhisattva, the Bodhicharya Avatar, this lesson doesn't follow from the ordinary presentation of material collected, composed in book form. It's not that way. For it is the expression of Shantideva's in direct expression from experience in another direct expression of experience presented as natural expressions of direct experience. And so then to provide explanation of the meaning of the text, hewing entirely to the words themselves wouldn't quite fit its meaning for Shantideva express the contents of this text as direct expressions of experience. So then in this class as it is and the topic as it stands, drawn from the behaviors, the conduct of the bodhisattvas, these behaviors of first developing the mind of awakening, training in the mind of awakening, but before one engages in the very enactment of the mind of awakening, before adopting the vow of the bodhisattva, developing the ability to first engage in such conduct, the familiarity with which comes from study of a text such as the way of the bodhisattva, study then informing a person that they have material to reflect upon, reflecting upon it, then they develop the mind of, awa uh, of awakening. So this is a presentation of the teaching instruction in the way of the bodhisattva then the pitfalls of never developing the mind of awakening, the advantages of developing that mind. So then disadvantages and advantages to the mind of awakening. Then with the development of the mind of awakening, bodhicitta, the necessity to preserve it, failure to preserving it, leading to the downfalls and pitfalls of its abandonment. Then developing the mind of awareness, of awakening, and then preserving the mind of awakening. The paths with their stages upon which one meditates, the meditation, how it would proceed, meditation proceeds through developing the very meaning in the mind, one's own mind. Number 
<clears throat> emptiness, momentariness, impermanence, and meditations upon these, meditation upon the absence of the self, such meditations are meditations upon ways of apprehending an object. One must distinguish between meditations on objects of apprehension and meditations that are exercises of the object possessor or the cognizer. Here, meditation on the mind of awakening bodhicitta is to develop the mind of awakening bodhicitta in one's continuum through compassion and love through the mind of awakening itself. These are exercises in the cognizer, the object possessor, that they would develop in the mind. Oh, yeah. That's the fourth chapter, carefulness, conscientiousness, where the mind of awakening has arisen, it is then preserved to prevent it from ever declining. This is achieved through conscientiousness. The mind of awakening, bodhicitta, is produced so that it doesn't decline. It is furthered and intensified, all of which occurs through conscientiousness. Where there is negligence, the mind of awakening falters. Where there is conscientiousness, it does not decline, but is intensified. And so the topic of the fourth chapter, how one preserves the mind of awakening. Oh, yes. ま、だ、そんなのでまた、まだ、ちゃんじゅうせん、ぐらいけ、や、こ。けばで、まんやば、ちゃら。あれ、やんじゅうちゃんじゅうせん、こまこまま、ぐらいけ、とや、たくし
of these fortunate rebirths, it is especially the human body that is required. Without these conditions, it isn't achievable. <laughs> and two, in the past, from beginningless time, the karmas that one has accumulated already, when one fails to purify them, cleanse oneself of them, then they hinder and prevent the mind of awakening, bodhicitta, from being develop and so they must be purified so the emphasis in, in the text furthermore that should one fail to purify the negative karmas then and find oneself reborn in hell then there it is next to impossible to develop the mind of awakening to meditate upon the mind of awakening there is all but no chance at all there exceedingly difficult to meditate upon bodhicitta once one is born in hell. So the emphasis in the text. Oh, yes, that they do that thing. Alin Yakawata, Yena, Tunichawa, Bet again, Bet, Tan, Paget, Tigi, Tigi, Kobo together, and the ring around the other, Begging a song call it Tarnet, the Lutin top, or the Jig that then Chabarzin, Ludin Chabarzin, Sim Din Chabarzin, or that Tusula Bet. Now, presently, what is had, that which is difficult to achieve, that which, when achieved, is so meaningful, the precious human birth, it is today's opportunity, it is the event of respite from hell, it is the fortune of the exceptional human body, the exceptional mind in the human body. All of these conditions are what are present now. It is the precious human body that we have at present. This too emphasized presently in the text. <laughs> Now, having achieved the precious human body, it's having been gotten. What must we do then? Can we do what we must then in this present opportunity that is so exceptional? It is our obligation not to squander the opportunity, to extend this opportunity, which provides us with the very ability to again achieve the fortune of a human rebirth with which we can do any number of things, which with which we must do what we must do. Oh, yeah. Yasongit
the place of hell is a fearsome place, a fearsome to all of us, terrible to all of us. Every last one of us is terrified of it. We're all the same in that way. Not a single one of us wishes to be there. Not a, one of, not a single one of us wishes to be on our way there. None wish to go, and all who do go, go independently against their will, defenselessly, under the sway of karma and the negative mental afflictions. Rangle now with the, the exceptional opportunity afforded by the human birth, which we take along with us as an opportunity that is exceptional, what is our responsibility then? The res responsibility that stems from wishing for contentment, how are we responsible then for ensuring it for ourselves? How do we make it come to pass? This is the first question. We all wish for contentment. Contentment comes from the accumulation of autonomy and merit. That's from where it will come. And it is through this body that one is able to accumulate that autonomy. Oh,现在你对印度，他那个是没有地点了，叫我中马都不一样。啊，你他让个绿地，他就马当玩儿，他就绿地的，他就中央玩儿，绿地出来当玩儿，哦，现在绿地出来当玩儿，绿地啊，
Melu Chabar Chen de Kine, Melu Chabar Chen Lang Chane, Ani Tse Dila Yang, Ani Dungi Nyongoba, Dungi Nyongoba, Shea Vitandala, Adi Oma Tsiri, Tete Tagi Tetone, Mongwa Chijang Kiluna, Chiwari Kube Tujitse, Nyang Echen Budawa Yorus, Oh, Yataka, that Tse Dila Yang, Ani Tag. With the inheritance of the precious human body, which has been taken up now by us presently, to not make use of it then is foolhardiness, the greatest form it could ever take. Now in this precious human rebirth that we have inherited, that we have gotten, if we fail to make use of it then, one must suffer in this life too. Describing this the 24th verse, if having understood all this, I'm stupidly despondent still, then at the moment of my death, my sorrows will be black indeed. Oh, yeah, that's in an around the Mizina, that's not the Mizit Migi. Milu Lemigin is a Milu Dana to me, Carson, Milu, Milu Lemu. Me, Lulin, you're to me, the Chega Nazik to me, she. Chega Nazik to me, she done around Chizo around that to me, she done it. Chew it to me, that to me, she should see grace. Says that chew it to and cheer it to the lady, and that's some love on that chigna. Now in our lives, in our corporeal body that we have acquired now, they are susceptible to the four characteristic pains of birth, aging, sickness, and death. And of these, death is the most painful. At the time of death, that it will that we will be terror stricken, stricken that it will we will be terrified the verses to follow oh yeah that's the prang it's the prang ma kaduji jeji ya na gete ta gi teto ne sa ta nan ran ju la gete sa chu chu ju kokop san bo ye be chu ju de la ane ta gi su su ju la ta milu ne de ni su ne su su gi Tango Now, the direct explanation of the first two lines would be, if having understood all this, if having understood all this, all this, that is, this opportune moment for any person with their human body, with the human body's innate discriminating intelligence, a basis with a mind that is excellent, a body that is healthy, all of these conditions, present, none wanting. Furthermore, the Buddha Dharma, as topic of study, available as topic of study, instructors present to provide instruction, the Dharma itself extant still in the world, an opportunity as fortunate as this, with all of the explanations in the Buddha Dharma, 
and an ability to comprehend them all. If nevertheless, through ignorance, we become lazy, then at the time of death, we will be terror stricken. So the meaning of these first two lines. And then in short, when one must have clarity regarding what is virtuous and what is non-virtuous and must be able to distinguish the two, when instead one allows oneself to be mired in a confusion, that is to not use the opportunity of the human body. It is to fall under the sway of ignorance in the forms of laziness and distractedness. By the force of that laziness and distractedness, all is laid to waste. One isn't able to engage in virtue. This is by the force of laziness and distractedness. Everything is laid to waste. The opportunity is utterly squandered. Ignorance and distractedness are manifestations of the absence of enthusiasm, a lack of any aspirations. And where there's no enthusiasm and there's no aspiration, then there's inevitable, inevitable postponing of what is urgent in the embrace of virtue. The mind isn't yet at all accustomed to virtues. And so it has no enthusiasm or aspiration toward it. And then, so it happens and in the evening, we would think it is time for me to meditate. But then moments later, but it is, is too late and it's time to go to bed, in fact. And then we don't meditate. But if the plan were to go sightseeing or go out on a tour, go out and about and entertain ourselves, it wouldn't occur to us that it had grown too late. And this is the intensity of the laziness that prevents any embrace of virtuous activity. There is excitement and excessive familiarity with non-virtue. And so we haven't yet embraced well virtue at all. Oh, 
Drummer, and having having never done that which is virtuous then uh, at death one laments i wasn't able to ever do anything virtuous at all sure surely i will be born in hell by the force of all that all the vir virtues that i never did engage in instead then i will my plight is to be born in hell the prospect of this the prospect of never having done anything virtuous at the time of death, when death is the moment, the actual moment is occurring. At that moment, all the non-virtues one has engaged in, one will recall. That one didn't engage in any virtue at all, one also recalled. Then one will be beset by great fears, great worries. It will be an excruciating moment in one's life, the most excruciating sort of moment. Oh, yeah, today's cigarette says I... That's <laughs> Sim that's <laughs> The Buddha himself in the Sutra of Close Mindfulness does the verse go just, just like this. This is of the moment of death when it's manifesting itself. At the time when the moment of death has fallen upon one, the Buddha said in the Sutra of Close Mindfulness, the moment of death draws near. Terrific and destroying the mind itself, having never engaged in any virtue at all, one looks to find another protector, and none is to be found. Oh, yes, あれだとねんべさんのさんのなんどだなんだとねんごんげあれすぐすぐせんだだぶじゃまとだとかんげちもせんべちょんじゃるさんもたんまとはちゃぐれすだいでかどれたきょくによまるれすきょくやだきょ
When, when death draws near, at the very moment of the manifest manifestation of death in the mind, the real event of death itself, at that moment, the excruciating terrors, the superstitious worries that beset the mind, the mind cannot control, at that moment, is there any protection to be found at all? There must be some, isn't there? Is there no protection to be found at all from this, the moment of death? Oh, but yes, there is, but it is virtue itself. If one has engaged in no virtues, there is none there, no protection at all there. Only virtue can intercede. Apart from this, the Buddhas, the Nagas, the Deva, they cannot intercede. <laughs> now at the moment of death, how could it be a moment free of fear, free of cause for regret, a moment where there's no need at all for any remorse? How could this instead characterize the moment of death? It could by virtuous dharmas. By virtuous dharmas, we mean bodhicitta, the mind of awakening. Where there is bodhicitta, the mind of awakening. If there is bodhicitta, the mind of awakening, this is the protection. Oh, yeah. The refuge, the three rare and sublime gems that are called the refuge of the Pada, the Tarama, and the Sangha, these are the three that are the refuge in the practice of the Tarama. These are followed. But at the moment of death, it is the Tarama and the path of the Tarama of method and wisdom and method and wisdom contained in bodhicitta itself. It is the dharma spoken by the Padda that is the actual refuge. Where bodhicitta is in the mind, every step of the Mahayana path is in the mind, complete in every stage with wisdom and the method aspect, all replete therein. And then there would be at the moment of death, no cause for fear, no reason for fear, 
no cause for regret. All of this by the force of the presence of bodhicitta, but bodhicitta absent, there is no other protector to be found. Oh yeah, that's a big to meet the young. That's a good to meet the young mother. And it's to my young, a song with Kenya, a song with me, no one to it. Is grace, oh, this way of Tundala, but it's see, oh, Madinda. Name a server, you ring tools, Dagi Lula, say, you're not, you're one, you say, member with. Semdu juga demi sah, semua di sini ada cuma ni, ni asal di Changju di kandar setila. Jawa tu matu lagi na, ni cuma ni asal ni cikir ni asal tu kira lagi na, ni tu ni tak semai banyak gubi lagi. Ani ni tak siti ini ada semua. One must suffer in this life, and then later. In the realms of ill fortune, in unfortunate realms, when one must suffer as well. To describe this in the 25th verse on page 56, and when my body burns so long in fires of hell so unendurable, my mind, there is no doubt, will also be tormented, burned in fires of unendurable regret. <clears throat> then in this life, one must suffer, but when one hasn't, engaged in any virtue at all, and is born in hell, then there the suffering and pain is endless, it is boundless. So the 25th verse. Oh, yeah, that's under it. Said the Chanju will sing with Tomba Lamba, Tomba Lamba, and then Tomba Lane, Tomba Yamba, so Cheva Inas, and the Diggy, Kiawa Diggy, and the culture is not, and in Yeweki, now the Chigger, Yeva, and Cheva Ina. ยามบัดอ่ะอันอันเกี่ยวตั้งกับเกี่ยวชิกเกี่ยวเจอหรือว่าสมมุติเส้นเดียวกันยามบัดกับชิกเกี่ยวเจอนะสมยามบัดละเ
takes one's birth, then they are there to inflict an enumeration of one's non-virtues and failures that one took the formal vow of bodhisattva, but then did not observe the precepts. And in addition, engaged in countless other non-virtues. And with their enumeration, it is the, the beating and the tormenting of the mind. The mind is in pain. The mind is, is filled with regrets then. And this is excruciating pain. And it must be endured, yet it is unendurable. And about this, there is no doubt. the basis of the human body then can become cause for the the torments that one experiences by the force of the karma that one accumulates through it and then in the hell realms, the heat that is known there is nothing like the heat that is known to us here. It would be like the difference between the heat of a flame here, which is painful, and the inferno at the end of the world and the destruction of the universe. The heat then exponentially greater. So it is exponentially greater the pain in the inferno of hell that one experiences it is unendurable. It is unbearable to convey this the verse. Oh, yeah, that's the judging to the day shot at the name of Mushin. I mean, I'm saying, you know, that people are shot. That's the gom jaggers. Same the same thing, I'm shot on the day is part of the house. Now we will conclude the way of the Bodhisattva here. If we go on, with the torments, then we might be exhausted. And so we will pick up again with the minds and mental factors, primary consciousness and mental factors, meditations. Oh, yeah. In the minds and mental factors, then, in those five omnipresent mental factors, here we turn to contact, contact among these five omnipresent mental factors. Oh, yeah, I should do not that there's a big more to do. You know, when she soon do this, so what there was so come, no one do it. Come, you can do what you want. You were done before, man. Well, <laughs> <clears throat> then fifth, the definition of contact is a mental factor that once the object, the sense faculty, and the sense consciousness have come together by its, its own power, selects an object in accord with whatever feeling of pleasure and so on is to be experienced. So this is the, the nature uh, of contact. 
ਉਹ ਇੱਥੇ ਉਹ ਅਧਿਕਾਰ ਨਾਲ ਦੀ ਦਿਆਨ ਦੇ ਕੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਯੂ ਯੋਂ ਸੁੱਚੇ ਵਾਸੇ ਤੇ ਤਾਂ ਤੋ ਮਿਕਸੇ ਤੂੰ ਮੈਂ ਵੀ ਕਿਹਾ ਜੇ ਯੂ ਯੋਂ ਸੁੱਚੇ ਵਾਸੇ ਜਰਵਾ ਯੂ ਨਾ ਵਾਂ ਜੇ ਸੁਮ ਦੂ ਨਾ ਨਾ ਯੂ ਛਰਾ ਬਾਤ ਯੂ ਛਰਾ ਬਾਤ ਤੇ ਰੰਗ ਤੂੰ ਮੈਂ ਵੀ ਯੂ ਦੂ ਚੇਵਾ ਚਲਾ ਅਨੇ ਯੂ ਦੂ ਚੇਵਾ ਯੂ ਦੂ ਚੇਵਾ ਸੇ ਦੇ ਤੋਂ ਦਾ ਦੋ ਦਿਨ this is followed then by clarification of selects an object that function of contact the phrase selects an object means to select a particular object as its own unique object once the object since faculty and since consciousness have come together oh yeah that you need to do the magic power you know what she is from do is you know what to do and then you some do was na ਜੇ ਜੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਨਿਯਮ ਤੋਂ ਜੋਮਸ ਨਾ ਉਹ ਕੁਝ ਸੁਣ ਦੂਸ ਨਾ ਫੇਰਵਾ ਤਾਂ ਚਲਾ ਸੁਮੇ ਨਿਯਮ ਤੋਂ ਲੈ ਸੁਣਾ ਉਹ ਕੁਝ ਸੁਣ ਤਾਂ ਚਲਾ ਸੁਮੇ ਨਿਯਮ ਤੋਂ ਜੋਮਸ ਫੇਰਵਾ ਤਾਂ ਤਾਂ ਦੇ ਦੀ ਸੁਣ ਦੂ ਦੂ ਸੇ ਦੀ ਬਿਨਿਯਮ ਦੂ ਦੂ ਬਲਾ ਜੇ ਸੀ ਜੇ ਗਿਆ ਮਾ ਦੂ ਚਿ ਗੋ ਬਿਨਿਯਮ ਦੂ ਦੂ ਬਲ ਜੇ ਸੀ ਮਾਰੇਸ ਤਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੂ ਸੇ ਦੀ ਖਰਚ ਨਾ ਦਾਜੇ ਉਹੋ ਥੰ ਥੇ ਲਤੇ ਮੇ ਨਾ ਮਸੀ ਨੀ ਹੋਰਵਾ ਨਾ ਚੋ ਕੋਈ ਜੁਦੇ ਜੁਦੇ ਚਿ ਲੋ ਤਮੇ ਜਮ ਕੋਈ ਜੂ ਦੀ ਲੂ ਦੀ ਟੇਬਲ ਦੀ ਕਾਰਡ ਕੀ ਕੀ ਮਾਰ ਟੇਬਲ ਦੀ ਲੂ ਜੂ ਦੀ ਕਾਰਡ ਹੋ ਰਸ ਦਾ ਕੋਈ ਨਾਚ ਵਰ ਹੈ ਸੋਨ ਸੀ ਕੋਈ ਨਿਯਮ ਦੋ ਤੁਮ ਮਾਰ ਲਾ once once the object the sense faculty and the sense consciousness have come together to come together we know in the sense of three people gathering we would say of them they've come together or three objects brought together three objects have come together been brought together and one thinks in these instances of their being brought together and simultaneously present together however to clarify this is not implied here that the three are present simultaneously it does not indicate that they have come together at exactly the same time for the sense faculty which is the dominant condition and the sense consciousness which it is based upon are sequential and not continuous meaning that meaning that the sense faculty which is dominant is cause for the sense consciousness that follows it it is cause then when it is present the result isn't yet present but then with the arising of the sense consciousness it as result having arisen means that the cause then is no longer present as they are sequential oh yeah ta ano sum du seti da sam lo khade tangi besna yu da ombo da shebo sum chao chao ne ti go res tu ji tu chao ma ko sum chao ma ti go ta so what might be meant then by come together instead or specifically that the object and the sense faculty and the consciousness have are all complete then oh yeah that you know that 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 you did you remember kung did that mobile kung do do that like what can she not some do ne ombro yon ombro juruba ombro juruba yon so chuba yon so chuba te so e ten che be le je no so that kung did that wa mobile kung do kung did do that that the scriptural support here is drawn from the compendium of knowledge where it says what is contact it is what determines transformation of the sense faculty once the three have come together it function at, it functions as the basis of feeling this is the scriptural source for the nature of contact oh yeah that call the knowledge now see you are the kind of no ਤਾਂ ਇਹ ਕਾਮ ਉਹਬੋਸ਼ ਤੇ ਸਤਿੰਜੂ ਸ਼ੰਬਾ ਤੋਂ ਚੀ ਵਾਇਲ ਤੇ ਜੇ ਕੋਨੇ ਮੀਗੀ ਤੂ ਦੇ ਰੈਵਾ ਨੇ ਈਗੀ ਤੂ ਦੇ ਰੈਵਾ ਪਾਤੋ ਜਮਦਾ ਟੂ ਨਾਮ ਸ਼ੇ ਟੂ ਯੋਰਾ ਨਾ ਸ਼ੀ ਉਹਬੋ ਟੂ ਤੇ ਟੂ ਯੋਰਾ ਕੋ ਸੂ ਸੇਦਾ ਟੂ ਯੂ ਦੇ ਸੂ 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 ਸੋ ਬ ਟੂ ਯੋਰ ਸੇਦਾ ਈਗੀ ਤੂ ਮੀਗੀ ਤੂ ਦੇ ਰੈਵਾ ਨੇ ਈਗੀ ਤੂ ਦੇ ਰੈਵਾ ਪਾਤੋ ਟੂ ਸਪਾ ਮਿਡਾ ਟੂ ਸਿਆ ਹੋਰੇ ਸੂ ਸੂ then how many divisions or how many rather how many types of contact would there be then just as the the mental factors above have all had six types that is from from 
the visual sense faculty all the way through the sixth sense faculty, the mental sense faculty, that is from vision all the way to mentation, the six faculties have their six types of contact where the basis, the particular sense faculty and its particular primary consciousness, the three are present, then the contact is present, there being six kinds of contact then. Then why are the sense faculty, rather, why are the, these five in particular omnipresent, called omnipresent mental factors, they always and continuously attend or are present with any given primary consciousness? Oh, that's same. Same <coughs> where one of these five, any one of these five might be absent, would not be able to process its object. The five omnipresent mental factors are indispensable, are absolutely necessary to any given conscious, uh, conscious state processing an object. Oh, yeah. For instance, Absent feeling, the mental factor of feeling, which is the first of the five omnipresent mental factors, then there would be no experiencing of the object, right? Oh, yeah. So, therefore, feeling the mental factor is necessary. Oh, yeah. The second, this, the second omnipresent mental factor, discrimination, where it would be absent, there would be no apprehension of characteristic properties of a given object. There would be no basis for drawing for a distinguishing between properties of objects. Oh, yes. That's from the Semba, Semba, Semba. That's Semba, the Mena. You look chobo, never chow. You look. Also, you can. <clears throat> and the third omnipresent mental factor of intention, where it might be absent, then the the identification of separateness in in properties, opposite opposite in properties, in preceding and that which precedes and that which follows, that which is distinct from that other, white from black, the preceding moment from the subsequent moment, such would be such would not be uh, processed by the primary consciousness. 
Then in mental engagement, the mental the mental factor of mental engagement were were it absent. Particulars of an object or particulars in an array would not be selected out of the array. The mind identifies and concentrates upon one in, a, in an array of objects without confusing the array in any member of the array. That mental engagement selects from the array says that this is it and that is not, this is it and that is not. This by the mental factor of mental engagement. Oh, yeah, I don't know about the regular, regular, regular men, you the table, you the table, then you the ten, then you forget to what you, you the ten, you marry, you the ten men, you know, the regular thing about the good or And in the fifth, mental factor of the fifth omnipresent mental factor contact the the encounter with the object without contact would be impossible there would be no potential for contact with the object <laughs> <clears throat> the mental factor of contact connects the mind to its object, engages the mind with its object's object. And so too, without any of these five omnipresent mental factors, the mind wouldn't, the mind, a conscious state cannot engage with or process its object. Oh, yes, and that could do not be. Same thing there, you let your chair, the duck, same you not the chair, catch and which had the reason. Therefore, these five omnipresent mental factors in the conscious states of the mind are necessary. Oh, yes, and that the same you not be. There's here, Gotsuna, and it's same with that. Chawachi with the college, with the college, with the college, with the college, with the same with Chawachi with the mother. With an understanding of the five omnipresent mental factors, then observing mental activity, one will be able to identify what functions are occurring in the mental state that allows for processing of an object, clarity in processing of an object. Oh, yeah. And that's simply for the nagi modi. This netuna and it's in use of the yet to have a college like your mother, the most in use of the spinny door. It takes half an hour or something to do that. Now, I think that if you understand the nature of each of the five omnipresent mental factors and actually comprehend them, then there'll be no actual difficulty in differentiating one from, from the other. This would come from a, an understanding of their definition. Oh, 
For instance, feeling. First, the definition of feeling is a mental factor that, by its own power, experiences any type of pleasure, pain, or neutral feeling. The definition of discernment or discrimination is a mental factor that, by its own power, apprehends the distinguishing mark of its object. Then the definition of intention is a mental factor that moves and incites the mind with which it is concomitant toward the object. The definition of attention is a mental factor that by its own power directs the mind with which it is concomitant to a particular object. The definition of contact is a mental factor that once the object, the sense faculty, and the sense consciousness have come together by its own power, selects an object in accord with whatever feeling of pleasure and so on is to be experienced. Understanding the definitions of each of the mental factors, one will understand the mental factors and have no trouble distinguishing between them. Whether one is meditating or is studying uh, cognitive science, in either case, some familiarity here will be beneficial. Then we'll conclude again for here. And as usual, if there are any concerns or doubts, then we can use our Q&A to address them. No, if there are no questions, then we'll we'll So if there there are um what is the danger of just sort of giving up and saying there's no way I have enough merit to ever escape the hell realm? So I'm just resigned to the fact that that's going to happen to me because I am not, I just don't have enough merit to not end up. So then the Samlo, Samlo, Samlo Kirtan, Dilla, and the Ninka Gariore. Then, ma the sona seja sat made some, then then any Niawala Hung younger is some, but Tablam and do, Tashim and do, and sonam and a tongue and do some, and a mar and a Niawala Hung tap, sure is some, but Della Ninka Gariore. Tambu Chirangi, sick thing, sick thing, more than one. He looked as you are telling. He looked by. Yeah, 
<clears throat> now you repeat all over again the 24th verse if having un understood all this I'm stupidly despondent still then at the moment of my death my sorrows will be black indeed oh yes is that <clears throat> if one thinks I cannot and I have not and it won't happen in my case, then already one has lost to laziness. Oh, <laughs> <clears throat> one mustn't think I cannot no do not think that instead realize the conditions are present here for me and therefore have enthusiasm for their being present for you oh yeah with enthusiasm, push by enthusiasm, then one takes the first step in their growing familiarity, their second state growing more familiar with them, the third step so that they become more familiar with the mind of awakening and bodhicitta and shunyata. And then am I meditating on the mind of awakening? Am I meditating on shunyata? Where there's no enthusiasm for such meditations, one does not. But where there is enthusiasm, one surely will. Chimu, <laughs> <clears throat> the present conditions are that one is exposed to exposed to the language expressing shunyata emptiness. One has heard expressions of shunyata. One has the discriminating intelligence to discern those expressions conveying shunyata emptiness. A meaning is discovered by a person in their exposure to those expressions of shunyata and day by day one can increase their familiarity with the meaning intended. Doing this deliberately again and again is the very process that is purifying the karmas that have accumulated over eons. And so too, each re-embrace of the mind of awakening to comprehend its meaning is to finish up that outstanding accumulation by which one then develops the mind of aware, awakening to think that I can't to have this characterize one's thoughts even at the time when one is attending to a instruction in the mind of awakening itself and then later contemplating the mind of awakening 
and then even meditating upon the mind of awakening. And in the same way, when one is studying shunyata and contemplating it and meditating upon it, it isn't that bodhicitta and shunyata, then their every potential is lost, but one can actually achieve these in this way. Oh, that third omnipresent mental factor of intention here, uh, <clears throat> that is the mind inclining itself there toward, in, in your case, as you described, the virtues that one didn't engage in, that one has engaged in all these non-virtues, but one inclined this way might better might better redirect oneself to a return to that awareness that one it has been, is being exposed to shunyata and to bodhicitta, the mind of awakening. And one has developed bodhicitta, the mind of awakening, and shunyata. This is the direction to incline your mind. Oh, then employ intention to direct yourself toward the virtues that you are engaged in. Confirm with yourself that you are repeatedly exposed to those expressions of shunyata. You've heard them, you contemplate them, and you do meditate upon them. Reflect, I have heard these expressions of shunyata and contemplated them, and I meditate upon them, I have. And by, by doing so, I have accumulated great merit, and I have cause for celebrating, celebration. Give yourself, direct yourself through your intention in this way. Oh, <laughs> Then, then use contact and the mental factor of contact to engage the object that is your, your virtues. Recognize the virtues for which you are responsible and engage in them through rejoicing in them, celebrating in them, and then engage again with the non-virtues by confessing to them. This is the engagement with the objects. That is the function of contact, then you may intensify and increase the virtues, and you may reduce and attenuate those non-virtues. That is the way to go, not to not to think, oh, just merely think, oh, I didn't do this and I did do this and leave it at that. If you do, you can't hire yourself out to any end at all. And so recognize the virtues for which you are responsible and celebrate them. And recognize too, today I have been responsible for non-virtues and then confess to them and engage the objects in these, this constructive way. This is important to do. 
但是我们的人生活是很难的。我们的人生活是很难的。我们的人生活是很难的。我们的人生活是很难的。我们的人生活是很难的。我们的人生活是很难的。我们的人生活是很难的。我们的人生活是很难的。我们的人生活是很难的
Meditate such that the a virtue for which you are responsible, you feel it relevant as a pleasurable sensation that, that you have been exposed to expressions conveying shunyata. You've heard them. It's very constructive that you have that you have and that it is constructive would be cause for a feeling, cause the feeling to arise with virtue as the object of awareness, cause the feeling that it tends to arise. And then with discernment, <clears throat> since the quality the distinguishing mark of that 
that virtue in its intensity, whichever this virtue for which you are responsible, was it so great or was it was it not as great as it might have been? Its intensity, its quality as a virtue, have ex apply discernment to the quality of the virtue. This then the mental factor of discernment. And the third mental factor in, in meditation then. Give us um, <clears throat> orange juice water. <clears throat> the mental factor of intention. Intend that that the virtue connected with the virtue, there be the inclination of the mind to the well-being of others again. And that the Buddha Dharma remain for many eons to come. That one achieve the ground of Buddhahood. This then being the inclination of the mind and the virtue that it is object, and then in the mental engagement, the mental factor of mental engagement, that mental engagement that mental engagement would be with the general sentient life that the virtue might cause for them their experience of contentment, the alleviation of their pain, particular the particulars they're engaged through mental engagement, and then in contact, intensify the, the particular quality of the of of this with a particular individual differentiating between self and other. And with this particular in individual directing the virtue to be cause for their experience of contentment and the alleviation of their particular pains, then these five mental factors might be meditated upon in this way. <laughs> now we'll meditate here for a minute. A minute here.
That was the meditation with five omnipresent mental factors as as a basis for the meditation. And then uh, this completes then the five omnipresent mental factors. And we follow this by the by description of the mental factors with a determinate object. This left for next week then. Uh, now we will close with our, our closing re recitations and, and then we break. Rowing, <laughs> Hard <laughs> <laughs> From my two collections, vast is space that I have amassed. From working with effort at this practice for a great length of time, may I become the chief leading Buddha for all those whose minds, wisdom, I is blinded by ignorance. Even if I do not reach this state, may I be held in your loving compassion for all my life's mind. May I find the best of the paths of the complete teaching, and may I please all the Buddhas by practicing, using skillful means drawn by the strong force of compassion. May I clear the darkness from the minds of all beings with the points of the path as I have discerned them. May I uphold Buddha's teachings for a very long time. With my heart going out with great compassion, in whatever direction the most precious teachings have not yet spread or once spread have declined, may I offer this treasure of happiness to all sentient beings. May the minds of those who wish for liberation be granted back in peace, and the Buddha's deeds be nourished for a long time by following the complete graduated path to enlightenment and the wondrous virtuous conduct of the Buddhas and their son. May all human and non-human beings then eliminate adversity and make things conducive for practicing the excellent path, never be parted in any of their lives from the purest path raised by the Buddhas. And whenever someone makes effort to act in accordance with the tenfold Mahayana virtuous practices, May I always be assisted by the mighty ones, and may oceans of prosperity spread everywhere. <laughs> I
I dedicate whatever virtues I have ever collected for the benefit of the teachings and of sentient beings, and in particular for the essential beings. In the land encircled by snowy mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful genius and sentient beings, please remain until cyclic existence. Just as the brave Manjushri and Samantha Bhadra do realize things as they are, also I dedicate all these merits in the best way, that I may follow their perfect example. I dedicate all these verses to the Bhish, with a dedication praised as the best, by the victorious thus gone ones of the three times, so that I might perform the noble Bodhisattva deeds. May the supreme jewel of Bodhisattva, that is not arisen, arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. Thank you. Good night.